Hey, Nick, how you doing? Doing great. How about yourself, guys? Doing hey, we're talking about one of your favorite stocks, Google, G-O-O-G-L. What are your thoughts here? No love for Google yesterday. No, that's <laughs> what we were just pointing out is that a lot of the former momentum stocks, the ones that really led us in 2013, have been coming back lately, but Google not getting any of the love. Yeah, yesterday uh, I saw it, um, that it had a complete roof at 550. That's the Goog, not the Goog L. And so I knew that it wasn't going anywhere. And uh, it, it, if you look at the options, uh, the open interest in the options, it's like there's a big wall at 550 for the Goog. Um, so I did not, but, but it did have a great run up. So I'm not going to complain about it too much. Um, it, you know, 578, I think it was 578, 79. Uh, it was a, a long ramp that lasted quite a few days, and then it dipped, and then another ramp almost as high as the other one. So now it's in danger to lose the, the trend, but I don't see anything fundamentally that's changed in it. So I, th I think some people booking profits probably. Are you looking at any long-term option plays here on the on the weakness? Uh, I'm still long it, uh, sh yeah, long it via short uh, leaps. Uh, so sold puts. I told you last time I had sold them in uh, the before the split. So now I'm, I'm in a funky one, but it, it, it's the equivalent of probably selling them uh, under 500 on the Google L. So um, I'm comfortable with that. I'm gonna not uh, worry about the day-to-day um, -day gyrations and just uh, ride it out. Well, how much uh, how much premium does that lose? This you know in a day typically. I mean that's a higher price option, right? You went out. Quite, yeah, uh, it's a, it's a lot higher. It doesn't lose a lot. It's a long-term trade based on a, on a, a thesis, and if you stick to it, uh, the good thing about it is tax-wise for me, I don't have to worry about it because it's a January expiration. So as long as I don't book it. Um, you know, I have a lot of, of premium already decayed in it. I can book it now and um, and walk away with a hefty uh, profit. But I'm just going to ride it out because I just see no danger for it. Because if you remember, my macro thesis is that uh, we're not going to fall off a cliff unless we get something new. You know, Iraq is something new. But right now in a, in, we're in a, a muddle period where nobody knows r really what's going on. And they're trying to, you know, they know what's in play, but they don't know how it's going to play out. So they're kind of like kicking the can, nobody doing much. And um, I, I don't see doom without new shoes to fall. Right. Nick, you just mentioned something real interesting there. And you mentioned that, you know, as far as, you, you know, trading with the tax implications. And that's something that uh, we haven't heard you mention before. I, I can't imagine that's a huge factor in all your trades. But could you just, you know, go into a little bit of detail, you know, what you had just said as far as where the option was and if you book profits and what the tax implication was? Sure. Um, you know, I don't use it as a decision maker, but if I'm looking to make a decision, <laughs> it's obviously at, in, 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 in front of me because if I'm looking at a, a 20 or $30 profit uh, per, per contract, I mean, it's a hefty tax bill. I have to take it into consideration. Um, so am I, if I don't need to book it, I don't want to, but I don't want to not book it and then take a loss because of me not booking it. You know what I mean? If I see danger, I'll book it without hesitation. It's not yeah. a decision maker that way. But if I don't see any danger, you know, the, 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 the premise th these days is uh, don't overstay your welcome into a, in, in a profitable trade because headline trading will take it away from you in an instant. So I've been booking profits and leaving money on the table no problem but this one is i'm not sweating uh just like uh, i wasn't sweating the price line play but it was a clear win when i sold the calls at its latest rip and then uh, wrote it down you know 15 20 bucks and and booked it i didn't say oh tax implications yeah. <laughs> but uh, so you have to take profits where you can but where you think you're safe and there's no need to and you don't need to book it then why do it so you did play the price line off that open uh, merger there, the OPEM? Yeah, the price line, I booked it. I'm out of price line plays um, it, almost entirely. I was looking to do it again yesterday. Uh, today I see it, it's 1205 but I don't know if it's going to last. You saw what happened this morning, right? And it was all based, I, I, I heard you guys say that, hey, we moved and it's not on jobs. <laughs> I guess, you know, that's because we were concentrating on the wrong thing. You guys know what's up. Right, the next big hurdle for the market to overcome is the psychology of tightening, 
And that comes with CPI, because when they said stop looking at the 6.5% unemployment rate, they they promoted the CPI, inflation, to the forefront. Now that's their trigger. So if inflation starts to rear its ugly head, as they say, then the tightening, uh, the six months comment from Yellen is really real. <laughs> so then how is the market going to react to that? Doesn't inflation have to come into play here eventually? I mean, they've been printing money here for the last three three years, four years nonstop. Is that not eventually got to start driving prices higher? It, it has, and uh, but they keep they, they do a great job redefining inflation. That's uh, yeah. where you go to, yeah, like drink the Kool-Aid here. Oh, there's no inflation, but we go to our gas pumps and we're paying over $4 a gallon. Well, that's too inflationary, so you can't put that in the index. Yeah, milk is up, and uh, you know that, that's what I buy. You know, When I go to Costco on Sunday, I grab the two jugs of milk and walk out, and I know it's a lot more now. And uh, you know, gas is always expensive in California, but um, it, it's... It, it, it where is the inflation you know they keep certain things low and other things are definitely higher it just depends on, it's a point of view to inflation too but you're right i mean they can't keep printing money forever so yes they're going to start tightening and how how's the market going to react to it so the good news bad news scenario is in flux right now uh, it's you know they're happy to get good news but they're not going to be happy once the good news keeps flowing and then suddenly you know what's going to happen like this week are they going to tighten the the uh, taper to taper or increase the taper so this week has a potential uh to, it, it can move markets the headline from the fed this week because it depends on what they say how they say it and uh, what they do as far as the, it, it's a coin toss it's a complete gamble that's why i have no weeklies for this week except uh uh, debit spreads. You know, I'm banking on a few things, uh, small plays on debits, but n nothing uh, credit spreads. You know, I have a few members that are asking me, what's a good level to sell spreads at? It's like, not this week. And because I don't sell spreads into events because it's a coin flip. Not only the event itself, but the reaction to the event. Like earnings, for example, you know, apples could blow the, the, the numbers out of the out of the sky. I mean, they could deliver numbers nobody expected and then say the wrong thing. And the market will react badly. So, A, you've got the event itself and then how the market's going to react to it. So, that's a complete gamble. You can't uh, sell spreads into that. What about, okay, so you had the Fed meeting earlier in the week and then you have the triple witch coming up. After the Fed meeting, will you perhaps look at some of the weeklies then and then, you know, playing into the expiration or is just just all yes. off, hands off this week? No, no, definitely not hands off. But um, the 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 levels, I keep watching the levels every day, and I can tell you that the SPY and the IWM, they're already in the resistance levels this week. And they can break out of them, but they're in the resistance level based on the open interest. Um, the, the, the fact that the bulls want to run is hampered by the fact that the bears have always, well not always, recently done just enough to remind the bulls that this is not 2013. You know, if this was 2013, we'd be running to no end here because the hint of bullishness and everybody buy, 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 and the bears are being clobbered. But this year is completely different. The bears are not scared. Case in point, the open interest of the SPX. We talked about this yesterday, Den um, not yesterday, last week, Dennis. And I tell you that the they haven't given up on the 1870, 1860 uh, level in the SPX mm. for the, for June contract. So these may be rolled positions that were losers from last week or the breakout of over the 1900, but it's still in play. So all they need is a headline <laughs> and uh, and they can run. And I don't think the bulls can run on headlines too far, but the bears can drop it far. So I, I do, to answer your question, I wait for the event to happen and I wait for the mess after the event to sell spreads based on the levels I have because the premiums will still be elevated because everybody's, you know, running around um, like crazy. Uh, and then you can still steal some premium. Uh, going back to the price line there, I remember we were uh, uh, going back and forth when it got up near that 1290 level and uh, it just looked like it was running out a little bit of steam. So I think you initiated some of your short. Wasn't it up closer to that level that you initiated some of the positions, not thinking it was getting near th uh, getting through 1300? I did several plays on it. I sold the 1500 January calls naked 
um, uh, se several times. And uh, the one time that was most expensive was $45. And uh, I think I sold it just under 45 And then it went down to 20 I haven't checked on it lately, but it went down to 20 two three dollars and i didn't catch the exact bottom but i had about 20 bucks in it i also sold the 1560 1570 january uh, call spread so that's also a bearish play uh just for um, uh, an account that doesn't have uh, my kids account it doesn't have enough <laughs> space for margin so uh, <laughs> I, I had to limit it to ten dollar wide spreads what about what about Priceline now? Uh, now it's come down. The street did not like the open table merger. Obviously, came down, filled the gap, getting a little bounce up here. Are you uh, are you tempted to uh, do kind of little range trading between twelve hundred and thirteen hundred, or are you a little leery at this point? Yeah, Priceline. I'm always liking to play it, but um, it's recently. But by, by recently, I mean this year. It had a few crazy downside moves. Uh, so I'm I'm more comfortable shorting it a little bit, but also if you've traded price sign for a couple of years, you know that it can punish shorts really badly, kind of like Netflix style and Tesla yesterday. So it, I still insist on playing it via leaps. You, I just told you the levels of change in premium. Uh -huh. Why would you want to mess around right around here? Um, for me personally, I'd rather step out in time and out in buffer. In other words, step away from price and out in time, get a bigger premium, and you can still make the same trade without having to sweat it. So that would be my play on price line. I think it's a Momo, but it's a Momo with actual money and growth and good, you know, kind of. It, it's a good stock. It's a good company. It delivers real money, and but it trades like a Momo, and. I take advantage of that, and but I also respect it, and I do not play it. I mean, a, a five percent buffer on Priceline in a weekly play is nowhere near enough to be safe on credit spreads. So, when you're playing Priceline, how far, like, what, what price, what options contracts were you looking at, or which option contracts did you I, write? I, I've played weeklies, but I always play the forward week. So okay. this this week I would put next week's. Just to give myself some breathing room, like if it jumps three percent, it moves forty, fifty dollars in a day on no it can, news. Yeah, yeah, no news. So a, a stock like that, you're just playing with fire. Yes, you can win nine, and that's my winning ratio, nine out of ten in credit spreads. You can win nine, but that one time you get caught with a whoosh of forty dollars, and then bam, uh, it's hard to recover from it within the week. I mean, if it goes into money, you're pr all priced in. There's no rolling. You got to book it. What other stocks are you looking at here right now, Nick? Which uh, credit spreads are you uh, looking at right? Um, I, I I wanted to start to get back into Google because of the run-up uh, insanity. So I'll probably start with credit call spreads. I haven't found a comfortable level on it yet. I also want to get back into Apple. You guys mentioned Apple. Yeah. And now it's in uh, it's in resistance territory right now, in my opinion. But it's at a level that uh, Joel mentioned earlier. You said ninety three dollars, right? If it breaks up with that, if if I put a uh, say ten day trend, a thirty minute ten day, that's about the level. If you erase that peak on uh, six, ten, eleven, and twelve, where it's just spiked up and then went back down, kind of like a hump. So as long as it doesn't get back to ninety, and then it becomes head and shoulder ish. Um, I, I'm I'm comfortable selling credit calls spreads around a 94 if I can get some premium, but I haven't done it yet. So I'm trying to refine the levels for Apple. I have good levels. It's in resistance territory right now. Uh, like the 9286 should give it a lot of, a lot of trouble this week. And um, we'll, we'll, we'll see how that plays out this morning. But you saw how ginger the run-ups are. You know, the bulls don't have the steam. We lost what? Uh, we flipped from 0.27 up on the TF, uh, the Russell, to minus 0.18 on that CPI headline. Hey, Nick, so, real quick, uh, could you get um, do a quick tech on uh, FANG for us before we let you go? Uh, uh, GGB out of the chat room here, with like a technical outlook straight up on oh. this one. <laughs> oh, man. my God, what is that? <laughs> I don't know. Get out. No, go ahead. You got any technicals for them? Oh, oh my God. I mean, technicals. I got to zoom out. One year doesn't give me anything. 
you zoom out. Oh my gosh, that thing is on a rocket ship. No, ride it, baby. I don't know. I don't know anything about it. <laughs> okay. All right. We've had Nick Shaheen on creating income with option spreads, uh, giving us his outlook on the market. Nick, thanks a lot for coming on. Education, as always, on Tuesdays morning at 835. Uh -huh. And we'll talk to you next week. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it.